are with my neighbor. <laughs> we just found that out. Allison Porter is our guest. She's won The Voice. She was Curly Sue when she was like nine years old. What a career. But more than that, what a person. We're going to hear a lot of stuff on how she's still standing up right after this. But I will say, like, I got over the drinking part, and then I moved to other things that were more, I did more alcoholically than drink. Uh-huh. But as we know, it's all the same, it's right? It's all the Pill, same. Anything with the neck up. Yeah. yeah. So, I, it was a huge part of my story in my younger years, but as I got older, I was just, like, the best stoner you've ever met in your life. Oh, pot. Yeah. That was your thing? Totally. You know, I have a hard time with... um. What I keep hearing is, like, my son smokes pot yeah. for a long time now. Uh-huh. And he keeps saying what it does. <clears throat> well, Dad, this is his explanation. Right. It's not the same as when you were growing up because it would make well, me paranoid. that's true. Make, is that true? Oh, yeah. So there's that thing where I go, well, is it, you know, is that a slip? Is that, you know, because you can, like, choose your high now. You can yeah. choose it so it doesn't even make you high. Oh, that was, I had a relapse during COVID. Oh, no. So I've been, I was sober from 2007. Yeah, because of this. Very, because of your, the, the thinking that you But had. exactly what you're saying is what happened to me. And mm. let me just tell you. Don't do it. <laughs> I'm not tempted. Don't do it. I like being present. So do I. So it's do I. It's really cool being present. But yes, you, you get some stressors and things I won like the that. voice. I deserved a relapse. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Disappointment of that. Cut. No. Anyway, but it is so true. There is so, it is such a wild universe. And I really was like, well, I don't, I, I'm very natural. Like we were talking about before, yeah. you know, I don't take very much medicine. And you heard that and this I, is natural. You grow And it. I was like, okay, right. I don't want to take, you know, antidepressants. I don't want to take right, this stuff. Right. Let me just try some CBD. Right. That's I've done that. I've done that without yeah, the THC. That's okay. That's, that's but how it But it doesn't started. work. That's why. Well, it doesn't work until you ha- until you have a little bit of THC in there. <laughs> That's okay? what I'm thinking. And then you go from that, and all of a, a sudden, there's sleeping. no more CBD. Sleeping is my problem. Yeah. Is I it can... yours? No. That's not your problem. Mm-mm. Oh, but I don't also, like I your don't cockiness have... there. I... <laughs> I'm very upset by but that. But I have a two and a half year old, so like it's not like I. I don't care. I have about three two kids. And a half I don't sleep. Olds. Oh, you don't sleep. But I'm I fall asleep. I can S- fall asleep. Same here. But then I get up. I'm okay with being up for a second. I've accepted it. And then I'll go back to sleep. Well, I don't get back to sleep, and yeah. I've tried everything. As yeah. a matter of fact, Gianni. Scrolling Instagram, have you tried that? Oh, you know what I did? TikTok? I went on Instagram and had them, <laughs> kept talking to them until I fell asleep. Then they watched me sleeping sleep. for five hours. Okay, I'm not doing that. The, now, no, I literally, I had the podium, the podium. I had the tripod next to my bed. I'm just talking to them until I went, and then I'm starting All to. All right, so maybe just, that's a thing. No, no. You don't want people watching me sleep. I don't sleep. want people watching me sleep. It's, it's disgusting. Yeah. I, I, can't, I can't even look yeah. at myself. I mean, I, other people. I've, I've been married twice, and um, both of the dudes, like, you know, smoke pot every once in a while or whatever. Yeah. And so I was like, yeah, I can do that. Yeah. You just told yourself I could do it yeah. because of what, but the people like my son and probably these, you know, your husbands are saying, <laughs> I know that didn't sound right. <laughs> I'm glad you caught me on that. Well, I, anyway, I, we could go on about that, too. I have uh, ideas about which one would be the alcoholic, which one wouldn't be, you know? Like, there's definitely, like, <laughs> well, that it, juxtaposition. Well, the thing is, though, too. when I'm hearing this from my son it's saying wild. it's just different now, then I'm going, okay, I would do, uh, you know, I would I eat a tomato, or... I eat a tomato. I yeah. mean, that's a plant. Yeah, exactly. But it's like, no, it's like gasoline. It's like I want to tell you something. It's I'm like, give you a little tip, by the way. It's real intense. On getting high. This is true. I talked about this the other day. Have you ever done breath work? Yeah. Oh, I have I never been so I got high on so stage high. the other night. Never I was did... the way I was singing, the way I was breathing. No. I literally I was singing a song called "Like a Drug." It's on one of my albums. It's one of my favorite songs to, to sing because it always puts me in this in a high. Wow. And I literally said to the audience, like, I feel. I feel high right now. Because of the breath work. Because of the breath. It's a big song. It's a lot of breathing. It's a lot of high notes. It's a lot of And it's from your diaphragm. So it's diaphragmatic breathing, right? Totally. It's totally a breath work song. Interesting. I've never had it happen during a song. My ex-wife teaches, she does breath work. I was. It's wild. I've done acid. It was as high as I've been on acid. Yeah. I'm talking about really heavy breath work. Yeah. Where you're basically hyperventilating. Yeah. You're probably cutting off. It's. I don't even know. I don't know if it's good for you. All I know is it's probably good for you. Don't need to do the other because you can do that. You have access to your breath at any time. I think you what you said is really like just I really do like being present. I really can yeah. feel I, I enjoy the ups and downs of life now. I'm not trying to numb out anymore. 
And I enjoy being able to teach my children to go through the highs and lows yeah. without having to figure out a way to get and, around it. And, and work through pain. You know, there's yeah. no worse pain than the avoidance of pain. It's very true. And That's I don't think true. many people realize this. And if anybody's going to get some messages, listen to us. Because mm. that avoidance of pain, it exacerbates and it festers. Yeah. And you're not dealing with truth. And you're yep. just, just, just putting Band-Aids on a leper. Yep. And it's no way to live. No, and I can tell not. anyone that I've been through hell. And there's nothing that's going to make me drink. Yeah. Or do drugs. Yeah. It's just, it's just it's, I've been through, and it, also good things, uh, weddings. Sure. My own and others. Yeah. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. You Sometimes, can make it through, I mean. You can make it through all those things, but, but you have these traditions. You think you're supposed to have a drink. You're supposed to have a shot. I, I don't, I, I'm fine. Yeah. I mean, the only thing that would lead someone back to it, I think, is avoiding life. Avoiding what's in front of you. Good, bad, and different. Life could be death. Yeah. I mean, you could sure. be avoiding, you know, somebody, your death or someone else's sure. death. No matter what it is, there's just, I have found no purpose. That's awesome. In finding this uh, this other route to take as opposed to being more present and going within. Because within is always the answer. Oh, 100%. I mean, I, source didn't, I didn't drink during during COVID. I didn't drink during my relapse. I had no desire to drink. Yeah. Because I really had convinced myself that I was going the natural route and that I was going to be able <laughs> That's what, yeah. You know, See, like that I was going to be you. able to handle it and I was going to be able to do How it about ayahuasca? Way. That's the other one I keep hearing about. Yeah, I mean, I, I hear about all that microdosing, all that stuff. I mean, I... What's your thought on ayahuasca, for instance, or something similar to that? People that go for away... Me, I have a friend of mine, an actor, you would know him. Uh-huh. He went away and changed his life entirely. And again, you start to go, oh, really? And I he, believe in the power of plant medicine. I fully believe yeah, okay. in, in it. Yeah. I believe in psilocybin. I believe in microdosing. I, I, I yeah. think that that's, or, you know, the ketamine stuff and the yeah. journeys and right. being led and through that, all that stuff. I believe in it. I think it's great. And I think if, if it does change your life, it's even better. And I have a million friends who live on, in that world. For me personally, I, there isn't a trauma I feel I haven't walked through right. in our program. In a natural yet. way, right. Through working the steps. It's a natural way. It's just, in my opinion, it works for me. Here's the thing, and I think you would agree with this. What I have found with all of those solutions, they're temporary. Yeah. Well, how do you sustain it? And how I'm too it, afraid how, to how, feel how, a how, high like how that. How is it scalable? Yeah. How, how, how is that scalable in your life? How do right. you use in your life every day? So right. once it wears out... Like, I have a friend also just went away, same place, South America, was yeah. guided. Oh, my God, it's unbelievable. Yeah. I'm in love, da 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 Back to the same. Right. Because where's the maintenance? That's right. the thing about reprogramming yourself with right. new programming. Yeah. Because we're programmed a certain way. Mm -hmm. Lie, cheat, steal, get over, get bullied, whatever it is. We're programmed all these different ways, and right. they're not going to fulfill us, or that's not going to serve good purpose. So then we've got this higher source that's in charge mm -hmm. as opposed to let me go escape. Mm -hmm. That's what I see with, with, with what's going on the planet. And I am not certainly not saying anything bad about it. No, I mean, I think it, it whatever works, right? But I don't understand. <clears throat> no one's ever been able to explain, even the people who are really into it, how it does, how you keep it up. Right. You have to keep going. Have another yeah. trauma you got to take care of. <laughs> you I, 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 you might. Well, I got plenty of traumas and you have plenty of traumas, but we just deal with it in a different way. I mean, yeah. So, what's your process for what? trauma? <laughs> <laughs> songwriting. Oh, is it really? Yeah, songwriting, singing. I mean, obviously, I do the necessary things that you right, know I've right. been taught through yeah. through my years uh, the of being sober. We're conditioned to certain. Uh, to I think respond certain ways. I, I heard early on in my sobriety, you're, you know, if if you're in a control room or in a recording studio, there's all these wires connected to one another, and one by one, we're sort of unplugging and connecting them to the appropriate connection, which will make beautiful music, right? Oh, I love it. Yeah, so yeah. I always think about that. Okay, yeah. well, I got a plug that's uh, something's going on with this plug, and I got to yeah. unplug and replug it in somewhere else and see if, you know. I also had no, you know, idea of what my higher power was or what God was yeah. to me. I wasn't a spiritual person. Right. I, or religious. You know, but... Yeah, I wasn't religious. I wasn't spiritual. And that side of whatever that is for me, whatever that what right. I had like a spiritual influencer 
kind of come for me the other day because Does I have a blue check. No, yeah, uh, no, <laughs> yes, they do <laughs> because I was because I was drinking a Starbucks uh-huh. and I had posted a Starbucks and they were like, "We thought you were spiritual." Be and I was like, uh, "I am." I am a spiritual being. I also enjoy a Starbucks every once in a while. What? They were and saying I, that's off track? Basically, yeah. Because they were, of the caffeine? It's, it's disconnected. No, because of the brand. Because of what? the material. Oh, oh please. These right. earthy, that's crunchy it. mommies. Come on. That's it. Yeah, I, I, I that, that one. It's wild. That's why I have my saying. I but gave you a T-shirt that... stuck between Namaste and right. kiss my ass. I go right to kiss, kiss my, my ass, ass on, on that, that one. <laughs> that's a that is, that is a kiss <laughs> my ass, Mama. Agreed. You are at. You have got to be. Ca- I didn't oh, even yeah. know where you were going with this. Oh no, it's crazy. I couldn't imagine it. Take somebody... your kids to Disneyland again. That's what they said. I said if you, if I can't take my kids to Disneyland and still be spiritual being, I think I think you got you're a little confused. There. Spiritual in any nothing's more spiritual than Disneyland. That's oh, a happy God. place. I feel the most connected there. I fucking love it. We're going to have an argument now. (laughs) Don't come for me for my Disneyland. I call it the crappiest place on earth. Listen, I love it. How about build some... Hey, Walt, how about some shade? Okay, fine, fair. There's no shade. And I even get the special treatment. I go... You do? Oh, Oh, yeah. I'm going to go with you. Oh, yeah. I got the whole... Club 33 and What everything. the hell are you complaining about, Ben? Oh, the shade? I still complain. I'm going to get you a big hat. We're going to go. I'm not going with a big hat. Yeah. You get on a roller Why coaster not? with a big hat. You take it off for the roller coaster. <laughs> and that but lasts for two and a half minutes. The point You stand in a long line for two. And even, I'm even in the short line and it's too much. And the heat that scale. He, he oh, took out all the orange trees. Oh, I love it. I love it. All right. So we're having our first argument. So that, that I will never agree. To we'll agree Disney, to disagree. Disney, Disney you... Love that place. I love it so much. So many people do. I love it. So we're going. On what Monday. is it? Is it an escape? We go or... all the time. Yeah. Yes. Sure. What if, what if you walk back and you see the the character with their head off? You know, smoking a cigarette. Oh, you saw that TikTok? <laughs> no, <laughs> I didn't. No, oh, it's a real happened thing. to me in real life. It's a real thing. Oh yeah, Listen, these kids. They see them with their head off. I, it's, it's frightening. I don't know. They'll why, have trauma. They got to drink over. I don't know why we love it so much, but here's really the deal. Yeah. This is a place where. My family, everyone is connected. Nobody's staring at their phones. We're running from this place to that place. We're very obsessed with, like, what are we eating? What's the new thing we can try? My husband's like, look at this. Look at this reel. Look at that reel. all the timing. Yeah. And we all are just like, we can forget about that I have to scoop shit out of the chicken coop. And this person has to be at this appointment. And that person has to be at this game. And... We're just together. Just, we love you on each other. Just go to a beach. And fly around <laughs> a ride. I don't even like roller coasters. I don't even umbrella. go on roller coasters. No way. No, I swear. I go on like the oh, shit now, kid rides. No, I really don't get I this. love it. I, I just love it. Anyway, the point is, is that I, I find spirituality. That's, that's your place. In yes. many different places. Spirituality is everywhere. Isn't it's it? Whatever you deem it to be. Thank you. And like you, singing, it's singing for you. It is for sure. Now, I I have been singing for years myself. I, I believe it or not, I sang on Broadway. Did you? Yes, I did. What show I, were you? I, in? I, I, I was. Uh, I did that too. I was the opening act for Kenny Loggins. That's great. And Kenny, the guy got sick, and so an hour before the show, I had to learn the bass line. Wow. And I uh, came out, and anyway, I did my comedy show, and I came back out, and I was also headed for Broadway. I was the lead in a play called uh, Funny Business, and it was about it was like a chorus line for comedians. I was in a chorus. You were in the chorus for, line, weren't you? Yeah. What did you play in chorus? Line? I played B.B. Bensonheimer in the Broadway revival. So now, you know, I people tell me I have a good voice, but I have a certain type of a voice. It's like uh-huh. a Broadway voice. Like uh-huh. I could knock the shit out of Javert. Really? Oh, yeah. I love that. No, but that's, that's my amazing. kind of voice, though. But that's not going to do it. Like if I was on Mass Singer, everybody says, you go on Mass Singer. I say, nobody why don't knows, you go on Mass Singer? Nobody knows who I am anymore. I know a guy. Nobody knows who I am anymore. Well, you can't now because I'm talking about I, it. I don't think they... Uh, <laughs> You could go on the mask singer. I the biggest nightmare of my life, Allison, would be I pull the mask off and the whole country goes, "Who the fuck is that?" I, you have a very recognizable face. I oh, I so. do not. Hey, you do. Oh, I'm not kidding you. I pee next to people after my hour and a half show. They go, "He was great." And I go, "He was all right." I was in the elevator. Six <laughs> people said he was great. And I go, oh, "I don't think he was that great." They're arguing with me about me. No one recognized me. It's wow. ten minutes after the show. Okay. I have a very normal look or whatever. I don't have. I don't dress flashy. I don't have a, a look. Steve, we call it. You're a Steve. I, I, I'm a Steve. I didn't ever heard that before. Maybe I'm a Steve. I think I'm sure Greg's a bad name. For me. But I, I, so the mass singer, if you were working with me, mm-hmm. which I'm going to have you do right now for free. Okay. How would you bring, I've talked to Michael Orland about this yeah. actually. Yeah. And he's worked with me a little bit. Okay. But how would you bring out my natural voice? Wow. 
Uh, How do you work with someone to bringing that? Good. Like, I can do voices. Yeah. I can do, like, I mean, I soul. Just, I, I can... encourage, oh, like, how, to find, like, where well, you yeah, really I could do, fit. like, uh, I used to do Johnny Mathis. I would you ask know, you. know what I mean? You... Like, I could be Johnny Mathis. Yeah. yeah. But I would ask I'm you. Roasting on the open air. What? You know, I mean, so I could do different voices, but which one's mine? How do you find it? Well, there's like there's two different parts to this. It's like what I always ask singers like, okay, who do you like to listen to? Okay. So who do you like to listen to? Well, that's the problem. I'm only 14% African. I just found this out. Okay. I never knew this my whole life. Okay. It's always African. Okay. Yes. I was raised like this woman, even though my mom is a single mom, you know, we're very poor, but we did have a woman that would help us. Okay. And she's very large black woman, Baptist church. She okay. took me there. I connected and resonated. So you listen resonated. to the gospel. Well, not gospel as much as Wilson Pickett and Otis Redding. Right. That's my, you know, sitting on the dock of the bay is one of my go-to. So like oh, R&B. lean on me, Bill Withers. R&B. Bill Withers is, that's, that's, that's like. Okay. Like so... I sang it at this, in front of all these musicians. I'm like, whoa. You know, they all went like that. You okay. Know? So I know but how. You, you but you feel like you're it's doing an even... impression. Yes. That's the so problem. So what do you like to bit. sing? What is your favorite lean thing on to me. sing? <laughs> lean on me is my favorite. So lean on me and then I hit is this, your favorite. I, I hit this point where it starts off a little slow, but then I get in. You get into thing, it. Where people go, as a matter of fact, I'm still friends with these. I was doing it one night at a karaoke in Atlanta. These two really tall African-American women, sisters, they went like this. What the? Like that. And we're uh-huh. still friends. They were so shocked that it came out of me. Okay. Because it's like. So why is that not your natural voice? Why is that not your voice? That's not your vocal. You're saying you're a Broadway singer. I think you can do Broadway, but your soul. I can do Broadway and I can do soul. Your soul is soul. But it's not, but it's, that's not me, is it? What what do you mean? Why is that not you? I don't know. (laughs) It's because look at me. (laughs) I mean, I don't think that looking at someone I guess Michael Bolton would, you know. Yeah. He does a soul. I also coached him on The Mass Singer. You did not. I love Michael. Yes. And my best friend's been his drummer for 10 years and I used to party in his basement because his daughters went to Staples High School in Westport, Connecticut with me. Really? Yes. I so, think uh, how, you, white boys can have soul. I got I got you. But but how do you bring out the real... I like, I, I worked I, with Todd Schroeder once, and uh-huh. he had me do this very, very soft version of, um, what was the, um, the Platters? What was that? What was their song? Um, oh. Are the stars out at night? I don't know. I don't know if it's cloudy or bright. Okay. I only have eyes for you. Okay. And he had me do it. Just do it soft. Mm-hmm. Right? And it was like, I always feel like, oh, it needs a little more. But how do you bring, how do you find that in the person? I think or don't you? that the person finds it and in themselves and you kind of just shade and file and shade and file yeah so when you're working with them i know you coached uh, wilson phillips as I well i did that was the like, best of my life that was the, that, are you that, kidding me i, love, I, I grew I, up on wilson i mean wow. i was obsessed with wilson phillips there three-part harmony is like basically my middle name it's like allison with an a three-part harmony porter like i everything i do whenever i'm singing whenever i'm recording i always I mean, harmonies are just a huge part of my show. I have my girls that sing with me all the time. By the way, I'm with you. I love harmony. Love harmony. And I think it's a missing thing. It's right? a huge Am I part. Right? I, I, I think I, it is. It can be, yes. way too little harmony now. Well, there's way too little, like, be, Crosby, Stills, Nash and, harmony. And the Eagles. And that's kind of what I, and all that. Where, that, that, where I land. Exactly. Yeah. I'm on the same way. I love harmony. Yeah. I stink at harmony, though. You I don't do. Know. You can't I, hold I don't, your don't. Your I have pitch. no idea where it is. Okay. Well, I can hold a pitch if you tell me what to do. Okay. We'll help you. Okay. <laughs> I really feel if a singer has a passion and if, if a singer moves in a melody a certain way, that's who they are. Like I definitely merge. I mean, I sing a lot of country music because I love, you know, folk country. I grew up on Joni Mitchell, Janis Joplin. Yeah. Um, you know, Dolly, Bonnie Raitt. Like that's kind of yeah. my wheelhouse. Okay. But. I, I also grew up on Whitney and Mariah, so I merge that for sure with, you know, how I sing, and I'm also a Broadway girl, so there's moments of that too, but all of those things make up me at, you know, who I am vocally. So What, what, what do you do specifically when somebody's singing? Do you stop them and go, 
you know, try a little a trim on this yeah, or a little I more do... vibrato on this. Yeah, and sure. I notice I... on the voice when they're coaching, I'm like yeah. listening to their coaching. Well, I mean, I had Christina Aguilera was my coach. So anything she said I would listen to because yeah. her voice is just And what so did phenomenal. she do for you I think that just... made you rise up? Yeah, moments where she could say, go, you know, go to this note or go to this. Yeah. I sang Stone Cold and there was a moment that Demi Lovato song was a moment in Stone Cold. I'm happy for you. Know that I am. She said, why don't you go, know that I am. You know, so like that, she that kind of that. stuff. And that was like, oh, yeah, that's that's sick. Let's do that. Wow. When I'm working with someone, I talk a lot about clean lines and heaviness. Right. So mm. like a lot of texture. This I want to be sharp and clean and really pinched. And this I want to be really open and warm and heavy U shapes versus V shapes or straight lines. Mm. Stuff like that where you can start to visualize vocally exactly what you're singing. And what is it called when you kind of like dance around the note? A riff. That's a riff. Yeah, a riff, a run, a run, a trill. Or a, riff, a, a trill. <laughs> I don't th- that one I didn't know. I never heard it called a trill. Woo! Was that fun? That was amazing. Uh, uh, amazing. We're high. By the way, when I, you're right. We're high. <laughs> well, I'm glad you were with us to see we're not really high. We're high on our breath work and yeah. our hang and our vibration. Our so much about singing is about vibration. Yes. But more important, so much about life is about vibration. Who you vibrate with, who you resonate with, who you connect with, with that ethereal connection. It was so much fun having a little ethereal divine connection with you today. Allison great. Porter, thank you for being here. And we hope you spread the word. Uh, it's called Still Standing Up with Craig Shoemaker.